Hello everybody, Alex here from Saikon Exotics and today I've been umming and ahhing what to do. So I think we're going to do a little bit my side, a little bit fishy side. We're going to jump on and do some more of the animal stuff and then later on we're going to go and do some more of the fish stuff. So we're going to jump animals first, fish after, that's the plan anyway. So I hope you enjoyed the video, please like, sub comment, uh, like, subscribe, comment and share for me and I shall see you in a bit. So I think the first job we need to do today is check on the new lizard that came in yesterday as a, as a re-return. Um, then we can we check on some of the animals, see how they're getting on. So we, it's first thing in the morning, so literally I've been here for oh, half hour. So I've been and done, turned all the lights on, checked every, everybody's okay. So we've got to go around, we've got to spray all the tanks. We've got to do the water bowls and we've got to check everybody's okay this side and then do any feeds of anybody who needs feeding so we can do all that and then we see if anything needs doing on the fish side so this is sewer escapes a lot so, <laughs> so um, he was escaping a lot of this other house but they didn't have the same lock the only difference between our tanks was this lock so that's I think the only thing it could possibly be so they had the same vents, they made sure their vents were in, they made sure the glass was shut. But if you don't have this metal thing in there, you have a little plastic thing which wedges in and you take it out. And if you forget to put that back in, the animal can get out that hole. So I think that's what was happening. So, because um, he's been here a day now and he hasn't got out of here. So I was a bit nervous yesterday after him when I was looking for him and couldn't find him. But uh, yeah, he was still in there. So we're going to see if we can find him and then check he's doing okay. So I've had a little look round. I believe he's under here, I believe. Yes, there he is. We can see his spiky tail. That's where he's hiding at the moment. Found himself a nice little crevice and wedged himself in as his namesake. So it's a spiny crevice, as you can see he's got a spiky tail. And what that does is that if he wedges into a nice bit of rock, those spikes dig into the rock, and if anything tries to pull him out, he's got their, they're hooked into the rock, so it takes him a lot harder for him to get him out. But I think he's doing lovely. I won't mess with him too much. I don't want to stress him out, because obviously he's, he's only came in since yesterday. So I want to give him a couple of days just to chill out, and then uh, as long as he's all good, that's the main thing, and still in the tank, which is a pr pretty important, just being still in the tank. What I tend to do is I, when I do my spraying for like humidity and stuff like that, I use RO water because it's, uh, if it gets on the glass and stuff like that, it doesn't leave the calcium marks, but the white marks. So, uh, but you don't put RO water in the water bowls because RO water has been filtered and it's got deionized water basically. So it's had everything taken out of it. So if your animal drinks it, it starts, so this is like almost like a sponge in water form. So this water is desperate for minerals. So as soon as it interacts with any minerals, e.g. an animal drinks it, it's going to soak up all the minerals to replenish the minerals it's missing. So that means it takes the minerals out of your animal. So that's not good. So we want dechlorinated tap water for the reptiles to drink. And if you're going to spray them, spray the soil and the substrate and the stuff like that, you want our road water. So we're going to go around and give everybody a spray. We're going to do um, vanilla spider first. Hello mate, are you having a bath? Oh, have I caught you in the bath? Have I? Oh, women, I've caught him in the bath. So we're going to spray all of his hide, in his hide as well if we can. There we go, right in the door. I'm going to spray all around. Get a good, so even the walls as well, because we want it to evaporate. So what we want to do, we want the a lot of this to evaporate, which then makes condensation and humidity, which the snakes need. So we're, in a couple of minutes, this should all be foggy, and that's what we want. So we've got Sparky next. Sparky is getting a bit of, quite a big boy now. So in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna have to think about upgrading his tank and getting him, uh, getting him a free foot and getting him moved up to the next size. Um, and we need to, he needs a bigger hide as well because he's getting a bit chunky. So um, 
that'll be our next project for maybe next week, something like that. So Sparky's in his hide. So we give him a spray. You want to get all his moss wet. Moss is really good because even if the moss isn't alive, it still holds, soaks up all, still works as like a sponge. So it soaks up all the water for us and releases it slowly as it gets evaporated. That's why we have a lot of moss in there if we can. There we go. Sparky's nice and humid. That's what we like. Also, got to do the barking gecko. So um, we've only got to do half his tank. And we don't really want too much humidity in there because he needs it kind of dry and kind of humidity. So we're going to just do a nice little light, light mist over this side and then um, we'll give him some food and see if he wants some feeding as well. There's his nice enclosure. If I remember right, he's in there. There he is. We can see his dots. He's in there. There's his little hand. So give him a spray. I need to pump it up again. Gotta pump it up, don't you know, pump it up. There we go. That's better. So we get a nice spray only on the one side though. And I'm not really going to spray the walls as much as I, if, I, if I can help it. And try not to spray in the water bowl as I just did. So that there is plenty. So I didn't go anywhere on this side. So this side's nice and dry. That's his basking area. So we're going to see if we can get some bugs and see if he wants to come out and have some bugs. So we are ready. So I've got crickets covered in a lovely calcium. Freshly done by me. So we're going to chuck them in and see if he wants to have some food. Because I love this gecko so much. I think he'd be so cool for I've seen him just after he's struck, but I've never seen him do the whole thing. So uh, we'll see if we can catch him feeding. So we're all ready to go. And you won't believe it, I'm prepared today. Look at that. I already took the lid off, ready to go. Cool, you thought I'd done this before, wouldn't you? So we're going to give ourselves some crickets. There's one. Come on, crickets. Come here, you let me down. Come on, look at you, you're all hiding. Oh, get off me. Oh, 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 oh. Whoop. So there we go, there we got the bugs in there now. So let's see if we can find ourselves a little lizard. Let's see if he wants to have some dinner. Oh, it looks like he's there. There he is. He's in the bush. Do you think he's going to go and get some bugs, do you think? I'd love to see him eat some bugs. I know he's definitely had some. And I want to make sure. Yes, he got it! Yes, what a bloke! Yes! What a bloke! Yes, mate! What a bloke! Yes, my boy! What a little bloke! Yes! Oh, I'm so proud of that little dude. So proud of him. He's at all the boogies. Was that nice, was it, little mate? Was that nice? Oh, I'm well happy now. And off he goes. So why do we spray the animals at all? So. Where they come from, there is a lot more humidity in the air. So in our tanks like this, with the heat lamps on, they usually dry the air quite a bit. And um, in their natural habitat, they got this humidity, and um, they got the they got the, it will rain and all stuff like that, which adds humidity and stuff. And of course, in their tank, it doesn't rain or anything. So um, with the royal pythons and most snakes you're aiming for 60% humidity, unless it's a special species that uh, lives in a drier or damper environment. 
So the Royal Polyphons, it's, we aim for 60% humidity. And that isn't a law. So you, that tank doesn't have to be on 60%, 100% of the time. So we aim for 60% the majority of the time. So as I've sprayed this now, so when I first came to the tank, it was probably about, uh, I think it was 35% humidity. So that's a little bit low, but of course it's been drying all night. So we come in this morning, we spray it, we get it up to 60%. I think it's just gone up to 65, but that's, that's fine. Um, and then now, that will slowly now dry up until the next tomorrow morning. Well, what will most likely happen, Will, is, well, what we do here, is it will dry out most of the day. I'll come in on, uh, and then on the night, just before we go, we give them another spray, and then that holds them over till the morning, and then we give them another spray. So, 60% um, is our peak and what we aim for, but dropping down a little bit is what usually happens as well. So we go down and up, down and up. That's what we struggle with in the UK. In America and stuff like that, it's great because you've got 60% humidity most of the time anyway. So a lot of the time you haven't got to spray any of your animals. But in the UK, it's a lot colder, it's a lot, and then in our tanks, it's a lot drier. So uh, we don't have the humidity. So uh, that's why we have to do that. And then for other animals, for example, like the, the barking gecko, doesn't need 60%. He's on about 40 to 45. So that's half the tank sprayed. That's absolute perfect amount. Uh, we're a little bit high. We're a little bit high. We're on 60. But I've only just sprayed it. So that's going to dry down now. And um, we just won't do a nighttime one on that one. Um, the damper, the damper ones, we will. 100% be doing that. Uh, and the rainbow boas, a little bit different. They like it a little bit more. So we're aiming for about 75 with them. So just a slight difference. But that's why we spray them and stuff like that. And you can see we're getting condensation on the glass. That means we've got a nice amount of humidity in there. Humidity is also very important for shedding as well because it helps the animal shed. If you're having animals with stuck shed or it's not coming off in one piece and it's breaking up and it's all around the tank, you can, we can assume that your humidity is wrong, it needs to be damper. Or if, you're gonna, if you can't spray every day or something like that, at least put a big water bowl in there. And a little tip as well, if you put an extra water bowl in there, underneath the heat lamp, the heat lamp will evaporate that water and add humidity to the tank for you constantly we've had some more rescued fish come in you won't believe what they came in a sandwich bag ready freshly made sandwiches from snake on exotics a little bit wiggly <laughs> so uh, they came in the bag so we don't have to take them out of another bag but uh, that's we can acclimate them in this it's fine um, so we can do we can plonk them in and then they can live with the little Oscars because these are the ones we had before. Yeah. I've just poured, I just poured water down my arm. <laughs> that was cold. That was cold. Oh. Yeah, definitely got a wet arm. So what I've done, while I've been doing the acclimating, we've been, um, I, I fed them as well. So what I wanted to do is, well, I haven't fed the ones that we was acclimated, I've fed the ones that were in the tank. Because these ones are slightly smaller Oscars than what I'm putting in. So these ones, there's a possibility that they're going to try and bully and control the tank. So I want to make sure these can have a good feed before we put these ones in, so they've got time to settle down if these ones take all the food for a little bit. So um, I have got more tanks set up ready if we do need to separate anybody off. So uh, they're all doing the thing off Nemo now, just swim down. So I'm going to have to grab the bag before it goes under. i to swim down. So everybody's acclimated now. Good old sandwich bag -o. Come on everybody. Out the sandwich bag. Come on please. Can we leave the sandwich bag please? I know they're nice sandwiches. Come on. Out the sandwich bag. Come on. There we go. There's one. Come on. There's two. Number three, what are you doing? Come on. What are you doing? Get out the bag. Come on. Come on. Out the come. Come on. That's it. Out the bag. Here we go. We're slowly coming up. Look. See? 
There's a good lad. Cool, that was hard work, weren't it, mate? What was you doing? Did you like the bag? Did it smell like sandwiches? Did it really? Oh, we know we like sandwiches. So everybody looks like they're in and happy. This is the big one that was eating his fish in the tank. So, he's, he's had a little red shark, he's had. Naughty fish. So, let them all chill out. Have them, let them settle down, settle in. And then, uh, they'll be fine because they came from this tank before. So we leave them to it. We'll see what else we need doing. I thought while we're on to the fish, I've got to show you the anemone because he's just gone, I'm going to be massive today. So <laughs> I'll show you what he looks like because he looks epic. Look at him. He's all stretched up. Look how big he's got today. Mr. Hermit Crab's still loving it up next door. But she is doing really well. Look at that, she's all stretched out. She's a living on the back. She's not on a rock, she's completely attached to the tank. But look how lovely she is. Oh, I'm happy with that, happy with that. So everyone else is doing good. What I've noticed as well, we may have to jump in there because it looks like they've knocked the one lot of corals off. So um, it lives up in there. I think it's Mr. Hermit Crab knocking everything off, Mr. Uh, uh, uh. So we're gonna catch that back up, plonk it back up there, and then everything is okay. So I think we'll leave it for a bit. I'm not gonna add any more to it as of yet. So I think we're at a good balance at the moment. We need a water change though. We do need a water change. So we do a water change and maybe a top up of our row if we need it. So, because um, with, with, with evaporation, so the water evaporating away, it leaves the salt behind. So over time, the tank gets saltier and saltier. So every so often we have to do a top up of our row, which is water without salt which has been deionized. So uh, I think everything's looking great. I wonder what that is there. A little white thing. And if that's going to be a nice another coral. I wonder, I wonder. So we crack on, see what else we can find. So I think I'm going to do that water change on this tank. I think we're going to do that today. So what we're going to do, before we do the water change, we're going to check the salinity. So the salinity is the parts of the amount of salt we have in the water. So with the marine tanks, we try and keep it to around 1.0026 off the top of my head. So maybe give or take one or two, but we usually aim for the 26 is we usually aim for. So it's one, let me check, let me double check, let me double check, where is it? Where's the hole? Ah, so it's one, dot o 26 yes so it's one dot o 26 yes so uh, that's what we'd be aiming for so what we're gonna do we're gonna put some salt water onto here have a little look and i'm gonna see if you can have a look as well get an idea what we're looking for and we're gonna see if we need to add some ro water before we do our water change so we want to get the salinity right before we start adding more salt so we'll, we'll do that now so this is a refractometer you don't need to see what's under me from so um, so this is a refractometer it's what we use to check the salt in the tanks so what we've got to do first we need to calibrate it with our row water so our our row water has no salt so we'll put a drop of our row in there have a little look through it and then we alter it so we turn it all the way down to, to zero zero so that's how we calibrate it um, and then, then we put our little drop of salt water on there, close the lid down, and then we see what our salt levels are. So I'm gonna calibrate it first, and then we're gonna uh, test the salt. Inside your little box, you should have a pipette, and a little screwdriver. So the little screwdriver is for uh, adjusting, is for adjusting this here. That is what changes the level on that screen that we're gonna show you in a sec. So that would bring it down to zero so we can calibrate it. So I'm gonna go get myself some RO water. This is where we keep the RO. There we go, only wants a drop, only needs a drop. So we're gonna open up our little flap. Put some on. Cool. 
before. You thought I'd done that before. Look at the angle that's on. Whoa, you'd think I'd done this before. So we go see how it's completely covered it. And we'll have a look through now and see what our, uh, our numbers say. Whoa. So you can see we're looking. Oh, come on camera. Come on, we can do it. There we go. So we can see the bottom of the screen is white. The top of the screen is blue. That is how we, we see it. Oh, you get a better light on it. So the blue is our indicating line. So on that, we are on zero, zero. By the, oh, come on camera. See, we're on, right on zero. So uh, we want to be on 1.026. So we'll uh, see if what they, we'll clear this off now. And then we're gonna, um, Put some of the salt water on there and see what we're on and then that will tell us then if we need to put some more ro water in there or we can carry on with what we are need a little bit of your water lads is that okay do you mind if i pin some of your water nemo nemo doesn't mind nemo doesn't mind so we do the same thing again a couple of droppers oh, a bit bigger droppers than i did last time But we've got enough to cover it, it's the main thing. So we'll have another look. Whoa, come on. By the looks of that, we are we are a little bit low on salt. I thought we were gonna be the other way around. So we are on 1.025. So that's not bad at all. I thought it was a bit lower than that. Well, the looks of it, yeah, we're definitely on 1.25. All right, that is, I'm happy with that. Point, point, 0.0.01, point, we can live with 0.0.1. So uh, what we're gonna do now is, <laughs> is we're gonna take out some of this water. So what I've got to do is I've got to turn the heater off just in case it gets exposed. And then we can, I've got to turn the other filter off as well because that's quite high up. And then we've got to take some of the water out. I'm only going to do a little 10% freshen upper. That's all I'm going to do. So we're going to take 10% out, throw it away, put some fresh from the, uh, from the salt tank and we'll be away. We've got filter off, heater off. So what I'm going to do, because I'm not, I'm not actually doing anything with the gravel, we're going to uh, just use this and siphon it up. So there we go. Pipes are going. That was just in the bucket before, don't worry. So uh, we're siphoning it all out. A couple of pumps on that handle, and it's siphoning. It's really, really good thing this is. Saves me getting a salt mouthful of salt water. So I know, I know, I'm messing with your tank, lads. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What we don't want to do, we want to make sure that we don't expose the anemone. So we're going to be very careful that we don't expose anybody who doesn't need to be exposed. And while we're doing this as well, we can catch that little bit of coral and put it back where we want it. So I'm going to couple another inch or so and I think that'll be it. There we go, that's all I'm taking out. What I've had to do, well I had to turn that because it was bloody battering this bad boy. So we didn't want him to smash any enemy about so I've just turned it down. We can always turn it back that way once they've filled it back up. Just doing stuff like this is a bit easier for me because I've got salt water on tap. I can just grab little buckets like that and do it like that. So we're nice and steady still. We're not going mad. We'll just do it with a nice little bucket. There we go. Water change done. Just chucking the filter back on now as we speak. If I can get the plug in the hole. There we go. Good. She's got some bubbles in her. She's got some bubbles in her. So we might have to just check that because we don't want it bubbling up everywhere. See how it's firing out bubbles. Oh, it sorted itself out. Sorted itself out. Lovely job. So we'll just put it straight to again because it's got a bit of skew. There we go, we like that, we like that. Sweet. Did slightly touch the uh, sand at one point, but uh, that's where it's gone a bit bitty. But uh, I'm going to get the grabber now, see if we can grab that bit of coral and put it on there in the right spot. I decided not to use the grabber just in case I grabbed it too hard. 
Really, I should have done this before I topped it back up. Oh, we got it, we got it. So, there are my polyps. So, we put in right there, I think. Try and wedge it in a bit more so the crab can't get it out. There we go, we leave it there like that. Happy days. So I'm afraid I think that's all we've got time for today, me and me wet arm. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video today. Please like, subscribe, comment and share for me. If you want to watch another video, we should have a nice little one there for you. If you want to watch the playlist, that lives up there. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I would have much appreciate it and it lives up there. So I'll, uh, I'll see you in the future. Bye.